How's it going, everyone? And welcome to this week's episode in how to write and publish a book on Amazon episode two. Uh, this episode is entitled Gaining Momentum. Uh, and I'm using that title because I have to be upfront and honest. I don't personally believe that writer's block is a thing. I am not affirming that there aren't times when people aren't struggling to write something they are trying to write. Uh, maybe you got a deadline and you're trying to get that finished. Uh, maybe you're, maybe you have an article you're supposed to write for school or something of that sort, and you're having trouble getting momentum on that. Um, if you're under a deadline, you might be stuck on that particular task. But I affirm that the solution is the same and you're not as stuck as you think you are. Uh, you have every right to disagree, um, but the point I'm getting to is there's always something you could write. Uh, the biggest back and forth I had with anyone is someone was like, oh, I can't write, I can't write, I can't write. I said, do me a favor, start writing about how frustrated you are that you can't write. And he tried like several hundred words. So this episode is designed to carry on from the previous one because our goal is to get to 90 days straight. No excuses, no yeah, buts, none of that. 90 days straight where you write consistently every day, a minimum of whatever, whether it's a uh, hundred words or 10 minutes or something, but you're trying to build in a habit and about 90 days of doing the same thing is a pretty good step in the right direction. And uh, it's a good indicator that you're ready to really get started and get moving. Um, if it is your goal to uh, get a book eventually published, because that's where we want to get. Um, there's no, there's no rush uh, uh, except for your, your own motivation, your, your, your own desire to get published quickly. Uh, but that's just how much time you're going to dedicate to to doing this. Every now and again, though, especially when it's early on, especially when you haven't trained that habit in yourself, it's challenging. So the next step is to uh, find ways to overcome those obstacles in your writing to make sure that you're getting into that habit before we're ready to start ideating a book or or doing any outlining or character development or any of those things. Uh, so that's what this episode is dedicated to. So there are several different techniques you can use if you truly want to write, but you don't know what to write. The first thing I want to talk to you about is just starting to write down ideas. Now, if you open up this document, you might open it up and you might name it random ideas and just start writing down ideas. Oh, hey, what about this? What about this? Uh, you know, a, 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 a little boy is lost or trapped in a well. And, you know, that's a, a brief idea. You don't know why he's there or what's happening, but, you know, that's an idea that you want to start with. Uh, um, a magic system that you might be thinking about, like a magic that only operates off um, certain uh, um, types of crochet needle. Um, you know, a, a magic system where you sew something and it comes to life whatever it is, whatever randomness you're thinking about, because right now the goal isn't to produce a book. We're working our way there. Right now, the goal is to get your body used to creatively thinking for a specific amount of time. Uh, so the first idea is just generate some ideas, get some thoughts moving in the right direction. The second idea is uh, and maybe you have something that you're working on, and that's great if it is. Uh, then you can start uh, uh, tossing out ideas and brainstorming on, you know, what sort of world are you going to be in? What sort of uh, society are they going to run? What are some distinctions? What are some faux pas that you could have? And what are some particularities? Uh, that's another area. So if you have an idea, you can start moving in that direction. And some of this might be an uh, idea you can data mine later once we start really working on actually producing a book. Uh, but for now, you're just kind of brainstorming. Uh, uh, and for, for people who are in that place, you're maybe closer to a completed project than others might be. Uh, but it, it, 
there's still work to be done for, for, for those individuals and for those who are a little worried that they might be behind. The, the thing that you're behind in is uh, consistently writing. That's the thing that, that people lack or, or need more of. Another thing you can do is keep a dream journal. Uh, I don't know how much I remember my dreams. Uh, I don't have enough research uh, uh, to know like how often do people dream what's going on here. Uh, but when I remember the dream, it's very vivid. Uh, and you can simply type out, what do you remember? What do you see? And you can be as detailed as you can. So dream journal is uh, at the very least an effective tool uh, to get you typing, to get you writing uh, habitually, and uh, doesn't require any creative thought because you're just reporting it. Uh, another technique you can use, uh, again, because you're, you're typing, uh, this might help if, uh, if you're like someone like me and uh, using description is a bit of a challenge. Whatever room you're sitting in, describe it. Write down the TV is located in the middle of the room. Uh, there are three photos hanging on the wall and just be as descriptive and minute as you can. This is a good habit to get in and in, in practicing descriptive techniques, uh, but it's still, not, it's still not the most ideal thing to do uh, when you're using it in an actual prose. Right now, what you're learning how to do is get, get those fingers used to be moving, get them used to be typing. Um, you can type reviews to books that you've read or movies that you've watched. Uh, what do you think they did well? What do you think they could do better than? Um, so all of those are things and ideas that you could put to use just to get you moving if you don't know where else to move. Now, for those of you who have kind of a general idea where they want to go, we did already talk about like, okay, you can start talking about the, the society or the magic system or how it would work. Um, all those notes are valuable. You just keep jotting them down and let your mind wander. Let your mind... Uh, 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 challenge yourself and, and, and create assumptions and challenge those assumptions. And all of those techniques will pay off a little later down the road. Um, you could start naming characters. Uh, you could start um, offering descriptions for each character. Uh, you could start describing locations. If you're using a fantasy setting, you can start building that fantasy world. Um, all of those are options in, in moving forward. And once, once everybody watching this is in that habit where they're consistently writing every day, those of you who have that idea and they've started gaining ground, you're going to start gaining more ground. The thing you're trying to battle, though, the enemy is self-doubt oh, this isn't any good, that doesn't make any sense, people aren't going to like it. Way on down the line, there are going to be things you can do to identify problems with your writing. And there will be plenty of people who one way or another will be willing to tell you what those problems are. Don't do that to yourself before you've ever even started working on the novel. Uh, when I teach uh, at the school I teach at, uh, one of the enemies I warned them about is that self-doubt. Oh, this sentence isn't working. Am I sure that's the way I should write it? We're going to talk about planning and world building and character development and all those other things, how to make sure that your plan is good. But what you need to eventually be able to do is let go. Maybe you're writing the worst thing in the world. Maybe you're writing the best thing in the world. It doesn't matter right now. What matters is, are you writing? Are you moving? Are you making progress? And if you're doing those things, you're moving in the right direction, and then we can channel that. That's a little bit of a carryover from the last episode, but the goal of this one is to give you things to do if you truly don't feel like you know what to do. And if you have this goal, like, oh, I want to write this story, I want to write this world, or I want to write these things, there's one more technique I want to give you because maybe you're like one of those other individuals where you could write you, you know, you could copy down what, what uh, uh, others are doing or just do fan fiction or other things, but you actually have a project that you want to develop, but you're struggling for some reason or another. The thing you could be writing are the questions or the reasons you think you're struggling. Uh, instead of trying to write what's happening, instead be like, hey, I had this idea, I really want this to happen, and I can't get any good ideas. 
I'm struggling because of this, or I'm thinking about that, or I'm trying to align these concepts, or I want this to be original. In this case, what you're providing yourself are a list of questions that you can then sit down and contemplate and address as a brainstorming tool so that you, you start generating momentum so that everything becomes clearer in your mind as you're working on it. The other thing I mentioned uh, uh, um, just briefly that I want to elaborate on a little bit, um, uh, some can call it fan fiction. Uh, and, and if you categorize fan fiction as in I'm writing this story, but I'm completely basing it off someone else's world building, all that other stuff, that is a very, very good technique. Um, and if you're really just, just straight up stuck, um, uh, you need to understand that there are copyright rules in place and you can't write and publish this stuff. But again, if your goal is just getting in the habit of writing consistently every day, what you could do is open up your favorite book and start transcribing it. But as you're transcribing it, you know, let, let your own imagination start taking it in different directions. You can challenge yourself. Well, what if this character made a different choice? How would the story change? So, you know, uh, right now I'm, re -re I'm rereading the Wheel of Time and um, uh, I'm coming up on Beltine. I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't read it yet. And if you haven't read that book, I don't recommend the TV show, but I absolutely recommend the books. Um, but there are several decisions that are made. And it's a very different story if different decisions are made even before the, the, the Beltane Festival happens. Um, so if you're a Harry Potter fan, what if, uh, I remember while I was watching it with my sons, uh, and this is non-spoilery, there's a scene where Draco Malfoy tries to befriend Harry Potter. And you might be like, what if Harry accepted his friendship? Like, what would happen? How would that have altered the course of all these things coming together? Um, so those are things that really, they activate the creative processes. And, and it starts with just typing the words as they were, and then shifting a little bit to the left. Uh, obviously you can't publish any of this. Obviously you can't, um, like use this for anything, but practice to get moving. But in my experience, if I've been stuck on a book that I'm trying to finish, even a book I'm trying to finish first, the best thing that helps me is working on another book. I mentioned this in my blog, when I talked about Brandon Sanderson, uh, I, uh, as I record this, he had the most successful Kickstarter campaign ever. That's because when he's bored, he writes another book. When he's frustrated, he writes another book. When he's uh, mentally exhausted, he writes another book. That makes a lot of sense to me. The reason for that is when you are creatively drained in one project, some people want to muddle through that and it drains them more. Believe it or not, if you've never tried it, shifting gears to a different project and allowing your creativity somewhere new to investigate, somewhere in the back of the hard drives of your brain is this RAM cycle memory that's processing the thing you're stuck on. And that will be encouraged by creativity in a different area. This is proven in scientific study. This is proven in other, uh, other various researches. Uh, 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 anecdotally, people are like, yeah, you know, I usually get frustrated, but then I go for a walk. You're allowing your passive thinking to do what it's designed to do. And that can only happen if you give your active thought to something different. So those are all ideas and tips and tricks that you can use to get to writing. In the next episode, we're going to start trying to genuinely create and write and publish a book, one single book. Uh, I'll always advocate, hey, if you get stuck with this one, jump to a different project. For me, I am always writing a new book, revising up completed manuscript and planning another book. So when I get stuck on one of those, I can jump to something else. Or if I send a draft out to beta or alpha readers, I can send that out and I have something that keeps me moving so that I don't get stagnant.
Uh, I don't think the enemy of writers is writer's block. I think the enemy of writers is the loss of momentum. And so anything you can do to keep that momentum going is going to be of value to you. Uh, some may have different philosophies in teaching uh, uh, in, in how they go. Uh, um, you know, the creative writing courses I've been on, um, I, I was a big fan of them because all they really cared about is get you writing consistently. If you're writing every day, sooner or later, the ideas are going to flow. Sooner or later, you're going you're gonna to catch fire on an idea and get running. But that won't happen until your mind and your body and your heart are used to this commitment to writing every day. Uh, so these two videos work together to do that so that once you get in that habit, and again, my recommendation, 90 days. So maybe you write 30 days and you miss a day. I'm not angry at you. I'm not calling you anything. But if you miss a day, you, you don't do day 31. You're like, nope, I'm going to start over. I'm going to get to a place to where I write every day, no matter what. If I'm tired, I'm still going to write. If I'm frustrated, I'm still going to write. If I'm happy, I'm still going to write. If I'm sad, I'm still going to write. A book recommendation I'll give you here. Uh, I wish I remember the name of the author, but don't worry. If you search the title, you'll find it. I promise. It's called The War of Art. And one of the quotes in that book, uh, uh, the individual who wrote it was also in the Marine Corps. And what he said is, the Marines teach how to be miserable. First off, as a former sailor, I can tell you that the military teaches you how to be miserable. But what that was getting at is um, when you're in the service and you have a mission, like the mission doesn't care if you're tired. The mission doesn't care if you're hurt. The mission doesn't care if you're in the mood. The, the mission has no regard for your circumstances. You have to do the mission. If you have to sleep on a rock in Afghanistan, you should be happy that you're getting to sleep. Like that's, that's the mindset um, that you get in the military. Um, if you only get to eat MREs, you're happy because you have an MRE to eat. Uh, you know, uh, you might be in a place where you're like, hey, is there some plant that I can use to sustain me for a while? Whatever you're doing, that's the mentality you need. That's especially as an author. Uh, most other activities, there's some external reward for good performing. Uh, the simple truth of being a writer is you can actually be a fantastic writer. You can, you can really be amazing. There are several amazing authors out there in the world, I promise. That has no bearing on your success. Obviously, you're going to do all these other things, but it, it, it's, it's just not. There are many authors who are selling a lot of books that some people will truly love, and then there are people who just will hate them. Uh, Robert Jordan is one of them. I have met people who just can't stand him, even though he wrote my second favorite series ever, um, and vice versa. Success in being an author isn't based on talent, and that's the big frustration. If you're a talented athlete, you're going to get on a team. If you're a talented player, you're going to get in a band. If you're a, a talented singer, you're going to get on a, a, on a competition show or you're going to get in, in, it's going to happen eventually. Time and effort play out, but it will, it has an inevitable reward because those talents are more tangible. There's, you know, you, you, you can go out into the town into a public area and play and people will hear you. You can go and try out for teams. There's, there's a pipeline for those things. The pipeline for being a successful author is very different. And this, this series of episodes does not guarantee you financial success. It guarantees you, I know how to plan, develop, write, and publish a book on Amazon independently. All the factors of success, they are so dynamic that you don't have a say in that. You, you either put in the time and the blood and the sweat and the tears, or you don't. You don't have to take my word for it. First off, I am not a best-selling author. But Stephen King, he said he used to keep a spike where all his rejections were hung. And there were many, many, many rejections on a very, very, very large spike before he sold a book. Brandon Sanderson wrote 13 novels before he sold one. Uh, J.K. Rowling was selling copies of um, Harry Potter out of the trunk of her car. The, it doesn't matter who it is. 
everyone who has found success, whatever lightning that strikes, whatever opportunity that opens, you can't be open to that opportunity if you are not writing and working and creating. And there's no promise of reward. There's no, there, there, there's no guarantees in that. So it's that much more important. You have to love writing so much that the sound of keys being pressed is something you love and you would do it regardless of whether or not you're going to get paid. That's this, this isn't just me talking. This is me repeating and affirming what any other author you ever want to talk to. I've, I've talked to authors. I've watched blogs. I've watched how to videos. I've read books on writing. You're not going to find anyone who disagrees with it. That means that first step is get writing consistently. So the first one was the challenge. This, this one here, we're trying to acknowledge that there are things that get in the way in terms of ideating. All the logistical things, the family, jobs, um, entertainment, other hobbies, all those other things you have to account for as an active decision to say, this matters enough to me to do every day. Um, I didn't mention religion because to me, it's not an option. Like honoring God is a thing you're going to, I'm supposed to do. And that's not a thing I plan for. That's the thing I should do when I live, when I breathe, how I walk, how I think. Um, all the other things, that's how you divvy up your own time. And so we covered that and now we covered, okay, but now if you're genuinely sitting there and you, you sat there for an hour, but you just sat there and stared at your monitor, I wouldn't actually be discouraged by that because you sat there for an hour. So somewhere in there you were thinking. This episode is designed to give you some things to think about, some things to do. So again, if you're just completely stuck, man, pull out your favorite book and start typing. And then just sooner or later, it'll, it'll feel that way. You might, you might transcribe your favorite book for like one or two chapters before a different idea takes off or before something you've been thinking about in the back of your mind just clicks and you're ready to shift over. That's kind of how you know. So if you watch the previous episode and you watch this one, don't watch the next one until you've done, until you've written every day for 90 straight days, no breaks, no interruptions, no gaps. Don't be mad if you write 30 and then you skip one, you got to start over, you write 20 and you skip one. Because again, you got to work into that habit and that can take some time, that can take some effort. So don't understand the difference between a setback and a failure. A setback can happen. A failure is a decision you make when you decide not to try again. So once you get there for 90 straight days, you've done some other things, maybe ideas are starting to flow more readily. Um, then, then you're ready for the next one when we're actually, when we're actually starting the overall process, but we had to do these two videos first because this art form demands uh, a willingness to pursue a goal that has no guarantee whatsoever for financial success. I define success as I publish another book. I publish another book. I publish another book. I publish another book. The people who read them, they get to decide whether or not they're any good. The, the study I do for marketing, things that I'm still learning at, mastering at, they decide whether or not I'm able to get the product in front of people. But I have the power to write and publish books. So that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm here to help you do. So I hope you'd enjoyed this episode. I hope that you have these ideas. Um, if you got more, put them in the link, by all means, in the description below, add other ideas. This is the thing that works for me. This is another thing that I like to write. Um, song lyrics, uh, go for it. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, anything that gets you typing on a keyboard, do that. I hope you've enjoyed it. We will see you next week. Now, next week, we're going to take a break from this series and announce the winner of the MLS book cover, uh, book cover of the year competition for 2021. So I hope that you will vote for that in the link down below uh, so that we can, we can give an artist and an author credit. Uh, and then after that, we're going to go full more on this process. So next week, we'll name the book cover of the year, and then we're going to finish up this series, and I really hope it helps you. As always, have a great week, and God be with you.